All right, hi everyone. Welcome to my presentation, Strategy to Execution, Business Owners Are the Key. My name is Charlene Cuenca. I'm a Principal Consultant, Safe Fellow, Safe Contributor, and SPCT with Icon Agility. As part of our session today, I wanted to cover how business connects strategy to execution, and then also talk through some business responsibilities. We'll also discuss the balancing act between business product and architecture, and also look at specific examples of where business participates in the actual framework flow. And as part of this discussion, we're also going to talk about business owner participation ahead of the PI planning event, during the PI planning event itself, as well as PI execution. So let's go ahead and take a look at connecting strategy and execution from a big picture perspective. So we know that in C5.0, you know, we discuss the importance of the dual operating system for business agility. And the business definitely plays a key part in that. They play a key role throughout the framework. And on the big picture itself, we do call out the business owner role, but it's important to understand that in the dual operating system of business agility, we also have business participation, not only with the train, but also throughout the framework. And we leverage the organizational hierarchy behind the actual virtual value stream network. So this is meant to, to show a more holistic view of business owner participation that engages the entire business organization into the overall framework. So we also want to understand too the importance of business agility in SAFE 5.0. And as part of SAFE, we have seven core competencies. And that includes lean portfolio management and organizational agility, continuous learning culture, team and technical agility, agile product delivery, and enterprise solution delivery, as well as lean agile leadership. But regardless of the competency, we're going to see that the business plays a key role in each part of that. So as part of taking a holistic view, even though we do have the business owner called out as a specific role within the framework, we normally have that associated with an agile release train. But in order to have a fully functional operating model, we have to make sure that we're engaging with all parts of the business throughout the framework. So we want to think of these in terms of planning horizons. So when we look at the planning horizons in the framework, we have an enterprise view, which may encompass multiple years of planning. And then within a given enterprise, we, we may have multiple portfolios. So this encompasses potentially multiple years, but definitely multiple PIs. And within a given portfolio, we may have multiple agile release trains and value streams. So that means that we have a planning horizon that might be multiple PI or associated with a, a focus on a single PI. And then finally, we have a planning horizon for our agile teams, which typically focus on iterations. But this planning horizon concept is really important when we think about connecting strategy to execution, because we wanna maintain that connectivity throughout all of the planning horizons. And some of the key safe principles that are at play when we think about the framework, the first one is taking an economic view, which is safe principle number one. As part of the business organization, they play a key role in making sure that we understand the overarching strategy behind what we do across multiple planning horizons. So that means that they're actively needing to take part so that we understand the factors that are at play as we determine the priorities of the things that we want our portfolio to focus on and we want our trades to deliver. But this can't be done in a silo. So we want to make sure that our business owners are actively engaging with the other functions like product and architecture and engineering and all of the other key functions that really form the value stream. So we want to apply systems thinking, not just optimizing for what's important to the business, but understanding the whole of the backlogs that the portfolio and the specific trains within them need to focus on to deliver on their strategy. So as part of this too, we also need to keep in mind safe principle number five, which is basing milestones on objective evaluation of working systems. So this means that the business needs to take part in seeing how the business solution is being built as the PI executes, so they can provide fast feedback and using the lean startup cycle, providing quick pivot information if they feel like we've achieved most of the value and need to start looking at something else because it provides higher value. But their feedback is key along with the other functions. Also thinking about our agile release trains and the portfolio that it's th those trains sit within, we wanna make sure that we visualize on limit width. Oftentimes portfolios and different agile release trains might try to focus on trying to do too much, but a key part of the framework and a key principle is visualizing and limiting width, reducing batch size and managing queue lengths. This means if there's 
a lot of strategic initiatives at play, along with the other things that trains need to work on, we need to be active in understanding what are the most important things, knowing that we have fixed capacity. And then also, like I said before, the business owners are prominently figured on the framework, but we need business participation throughout the framework. So this means that we want to centralize some of those business decisions and decentralize some of them. So we'll talk about some examples of, of some roles or different parts of the business that take part. But in essence, we want to make sure we leverage safe principle number nine, which is decentralizing decision making. And then last but not least is safe principle number 10 which is really making sure that no matter what we do and what planning horizon we're talking about, we're always making sure that we organize around value. And we can't have that organization fully cross-functional in our virtual value stream network unless we have the business engaged. So let's talk about some examples of what types of business participation are we talking about? I mentioned earlier that we have different parts of the business that might be engaged. So if we think about them as three connected areas, we might have business executive participation. We might have a business owner that's part of an agile release train. And we might also have business subject matter experts or SMEs that are actively working with the agile teams. But in either case, the responsibilities cross these different areas. From a business executive perspective, we know that they're ultimately responsible for establishing and making sure that the strategy is known. And they're typically responsible for an entire line of business and the business verticals within them. So they do develop the overarching strategy and goals for the business. They're also focused on the successful and general operation of the business itself. As being part of being a business executive, they set revenue and growth targets to make sure that strategy can be accomplished. And in order to do that, they need to secure funding for those initiatives. So ultimately, they're responsible for business outcomes and return on investment. When we look at a specific agile release training, we have the role of a business owner that makes sure that that connectivity of that strategy that's already established and the funding for it can tie to the agile release train and make sure that that connectivity remains. So they help ensure that the priorities of the overall portfolio can now be articulated to the train and that strategy is connected to the goals of the train. They also, in terms of funding, which the executive help us secure, that they help verify that those investments are spent on the right things at the right time. And that means that they have to be an active participant. We don't want passive business participants just, just seeing what's happening, but they actually need to take a key role and, and an active part in making sure that throughout the PI cycle, that they're helping to prepare for PI planning, they're helping to take part in the PI event itself, and also in PI execution. And then once the PI you know, concludes and they're ready to plan the next PI, they take part in the inspect and adapt workshop as well. Another key part that they play is making sure that they take an active part in the demos, just like we talked about when we talked about the safe principles, is making sure they're evaluating and providing objective feedback on the business solutions that are being built by the train. And of course, making sure that they take, take an active part in influencing the prioritization of the different features and epics that might impact the specific agile release train, along with the other key functions. As part of the business lens that they provide, they help provide key insights on translating the strategic intent that was developed into something that can actually be tactically implemented on these agile release trades. So they're a key part in participating in backlog refinement for epics and features. Then when we talk even more tactically after the PI event, having folks that take part in the agile teams themselves. This typically is a business subject matter expert. Some of these SMEs, may directly be integrated into a team and a dedicated member, or some of them may provide part-time domain knowledge. But in either case, they have heavy knowledge of the specific business domain they're SME within, and they work with the agile teams on a periodic, if not daily basis. So the teams are able to leverage their domain expertise to generate and develop value-oriented backlog items that are associated with the teams that they're helping. This further helps connect strategy to execution by making sure that as we move from epics to features to stories, that we don't lose that in translation somewhere. So this requires active business participation. And of course, once again, we have to apply systems thinking. We can't do this in a silo. Business needs to partner with product, the technical SMEs and the other functions that are part of our agile team to make sure that throughout our ecosystem and throughout this process, that we can articulate what the strategy is, no matter the planning horizon. So let's take a look at that again. 
we've talked about the planning horizons and we've talked about some example parts of the business that would take part in those. So we have the enterprise, which is typically multiple year, multiple PI portfolio, which could also be multiple year, multiple, um, multiple PI. But within the enterprise itself, we have enterprise executives from other functions that are taking part in that enterprise strategy. But we'll have participation from the business as well in the form of those business executives. When we look at the portfolio, we also have business executives and business owners taking part in the portfolio process. And for a specific agile release training, we'll have business owners and business MEs that are part of that overall process as well. And once again, for an agile team and the, the planning horizon that they're concerned with, they may engage with a business ME on a day-to-day -day basis. So the summary here is that participation from the business, different parts of the organization, is just in time and just enough and at the right level in the business organization. So now let's take a look at the partnership between the other functions. So we understand that the business is key to helping tie strategy to execution, but they can't do that in a silo. So when we start looking at the balancing act between the different functions, specifically the business, product, and architecture and engineering, we can, we can see that relationship here. So as part of the different parts of the business engaging in the different planning horizons, definitely the portfolio is a key area. That's a key area where we're developing strategy and investment funding. So we definitely want business participation there. And once we've secured that funding, making sure that we can understand, you know, the forecasting associated with that. So we have an idea of what value we want to achieve and when is really key and definitely requires business participation. And once we execute, making sure they can take part in evaluating the MVPs that we develop as part of the lean startup cycle is also very important. So we definitely want business participation, but they can't do that by themselves. They need to understand the partnership and have a partnership with the product organization, as well as with technology, which includes architecture and engineering. So they have a cohesive view of all the different things that are in the backlog. Product also plays a key role here and they're a key partner. So their, their goal is to help make sure that they connect to the business strategy and also to how they can take the business strategy and shape them by focusing on the customer. Product management plays a key role in understanding you know, who the customer is, what the customer pain points are, and being able to articulate the strategy that's at play into something that the customer is going to want to buy from us. So they help build innovative products. They use design thinking techniques to help articulate that and understand uh, the customer problems that we're trying to solve and help us translate the business strategy into a backlog the train can execute on that will result in delightful products that customers will want to purchase um, using design thinking and using innovative techniques. So when we look at architecture and engineering, they also play a key role because a lot of the things that a given agile release train will work on are not only strategic initiatives that come from the business. There are other things. They, they might have to work on regulatory compliance items, business as usual activity, um, engineering led work and things like that. All of those things are part of the demand that comes to a train. It's up to product management to be that funnel and filter for the train. But we also need to understand by partnering with architecture and engineering, what are the enablers that are part of the runway that we need to consider as part of our backlog so that we understand the true capacity, the true availability um, of those items that the train needs to focus on. Unless we partner together, we're not gonna have that holistic view. So let's take a look at the overall framework flow to have a better understanding of what that looks like from a big picture view. We've covered the planning horizons. We've talked about the cross-functional nature of engagement needed between product, between the business, between architecture and engineering, and also with, within the delivery groups that are part of our agile release trains and teams. So what you can see here is when we think about the business and their participation, it's represented by these red dots. And you can see as we look at the enterprise cadence and we look at the portfolio, program and team planning horizons, there's business participation that's needed throughout. And you can see that flag here in these different ceremonies. When we look at this again through a different lens, when we start looking at the connected Kanban system, when we move from strategic initiatives to epics that, that the portfolio is focused on to features that the agile release train is focused on. And then eventually after PI planning, teams are executing stories. We can see that again, that without business participation, 
the flow there may be inhibited because things could get lost in translation. So as a key partner in making sure that they connect strategy to execution effectively, they take part in all parts of the framework in different parts of the flow-based process in our Kanban systems. So when we take a look at the different parts of the framework and how they're connected, just like we talked about in the Kanban system, it's also important to understand there's an overlap here. So we talked about kind of the horizontal partnership with the different functions, but we also have to understand as well that even within the business and the business organization, where we talked about business executives and business owners and business subject matter experts, that they're not just engaged in a specific planning horizon, but they cross over the various planning horizons. So for example, a business executive, while they may understand the overall enterprise strategy and work with other executives to help determine and align on that, they're also working specifically with a portfolio and securing the funding there so that we understand the value delivery we're trying to achieve within that given portfolio. But they also engage with the agile release trains. And this is important to understand too, that they're, they're just not for a specific planning horizon. When we look at the business owners, which when we look at the safe big picture, they're prominently figured as part of the agile release train, but they also work with the portfolio. They help in those discussions and help articulate a common understanding of the strategy. They may also work with some of the agile teams, uh, providing that, that further connectivity. And then the business subject matter experts that are already working with the agile teams on the train may also work with, with the train itself and with the business owners as part of an overall ex extended business team so that they all have an understanding of what the strategy is and what are the different priorities for the different planning horizons. So once again, participation in the framework is just in time and just enough and at the right level. So when we focus specifically on the PI cycle, which is crucial in our planning process, we know that PI planning event has always been the secret sauce of SAFE so when we start thinking about the purpose of PI planning, we talk about it being the place where we're trying to match capacity and demand and also building you know, collaboration in our virtual network. So we have good rapport with the other functions and we can effectively become a high performing train. When we start looking at a PI cycle specifically, like you see here, we, we normally think of a PI planning cycle as a dual track view. First, we focus on executing the PI objectives and the PI that we just planned. But also we have to keep in mind that the next PI planning is just right around the corner. So we have to start thinking about prioritizing those things and thinking about what, what the vision and strategy is for that PI planning cycle. So that's where we have this dual track view. When we look at the, uh, the red dots that are denoted here, it starts to depict and show that regardless of where we are in that kind of dual track view of the cycle, there's heavy business participation. We need them. And this helps them connect back with the train and the different roles, remembering what the strategy actually is. So they'll help shape the vision for the upcoming PI. They'll help uh, partner with product and other roles to develop value-oriented backlog items in the form of epics and features so that we can maintain that connectivity. And they may take part in um, additional feature refinement ahead of the PI, as well as prioritization. That's a key part that they play. So everyone has that, that strategic lens that uh, they can provide for us. So when we also start looking at different participation from the business, oftentimes I get asked, how much time are we talking about here? So while we look at this example, it's not necessarily true that, you know, this is a set in stone type of recommendation. It's just an example. How, how much time that we want to apply is gonna be situational and contextual. And we also wanna call out too, I think when I get that question, it's usually earlier on in the engagement when, when we're first starting to integrate the business into this process, we really want them to apply systems thinking and really think of this as a cultural change for the way they work, that it, there's no way that we can just depict how much time you need to be in what ceremony. We can give some examples, but in essence, if we're in a portfolio where we have a lot of agile release trains, and they're, they're actively engaged and, and functioning, we want business participation in there. And moreover, we want the business to understand that this is not in addition to what you already do, this should be part of your day job. You're only helping yourself if you engage within the process and start becoming part of the process and making it just part of the way you work. So when we take a look again at the events leading up to the PI event itself, we, we talk in terms of PI preparation 
And then we talk in terms of the PI planning event. And then we also talk in terms of PI execution. So when we start looking at the, the PI preparation ahead of the PI planning event, the business as a whole may participate in overall portfolio planning. So this might be the business executives, and this might happen you know, a few times a year. And as part of the portfolio leadership team, that portfolio leadership team is typically cross-functional. So we definitely want engagement from the business. We want engagement from product and engineering and architecture. And so we might engage with some of our business executives and business owners. And that sync may occur a month, you know, monthly or more, just depending on your needs. But definitely as part of PI planning preparation, take part in backlog refinements and definitely provide your key insights from your business lens so we can always understand what the actual overall strategy is we're trying to achieve as we start to you know, break these down into epics and eventually into features and eventually into stories. So this is heavy participation from business owners and potentially business needs. Also, when we start looking at the PI planning event itself, this is really key to have business participation. I've often had you know, business executives come in and give the overarching business strategy and it's, it's usually very eye-opening to have that lens because a lot of times trains and teams are very focused on delivery and they get disconnected from understanding the big picture view in terms of strategy and strategic intent. So having direct business participation to give those overviews is very, very helpful because typically they'll give the overarching view across you know, the strategy for the year or longer and then quickly be able to tie back how what we're focusing on in a given PI in terms of PI planning can help us achieve those goals. So it really helps connect that strategy to execution. Also key in the PI planning event is making sure that we have direct business participation in the draft plan review. Because like we said before, matching strategy um, to the value delivery of the train is key, but we look for PI planning to help us match capacity and demand. And oftentimes there is definitely more demand than capacity. So as we move from draft plan review to, to the management review, we, we will now have a, a full picture of what the train said it could and could not do for a given PI. And often there's trade-off discussions that happen. So having the business involved there along with the other functions is important because we have, we have to make sure that everyone is comfortable with whatever trade-off decisions we make or whatever way we come up with to solve problems, because that means that some things may have to get deferred. And then also final plan review is very key because we want to make sure that the business is involved in, you know, giving their um, alignment to what the team said that they could do and commit to, feel comfortable committing to over a given PI planning session. They also help score business value. So this is another key thing that they do that we want their participation in is scoring the plan business value on the PI objectives that the team said they felt comfortable delivering over the PI. And just having that alignment with the business is key here as far as connecting strategy and execution. And then to wrap up the event, we normally do a confidence vote. So definitely want participation from the business, the business owners and the business needs uh, to give us their, their vote of confidence on how comfortable they feel based on what they see. Also looking at PI execution, once the PI planning event has ended, then want that direct participation, just like we talked about when we discussed the safe principles and providing objective feedback, attend the system demos, which may happen every iteration so that they can see the progress of the business solution and be able to provide fast feedback and take that information into their portfolio sync so that they can actually um, you know, make some trade-offs on some MVP discussions for specific epics using the Lean Startup Cycle. And of course, we want them to participate in the Inspect and Adapt Workshop because this is where we close out the PI and we can see the full solution that was able to be built during the course of the PI and they score the actual business value as part of that. But we'd also like them to stay and take part in the problem solving as well. Okay, so in summary, we talked about how business owners maintain the connection between strategy and execution. We also discuss where business is involved in the key parts of the different planning horizons across the enterprise, portfolio, agile release train, and the agile teams, as well as their respective ceremonies. We also discuss what parts of the business may participate in those different planning horizons, and also provided an example of how much time business may need to participate in each of those ceremonies. So I hope that gives you a holistic view of how business owners are key in tying strategy to execution. And uh, I hope to see you to answer any questions you have during the Q&A session. So thanks for attending.